Yo, hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about advanced grenadier tactics. Now, to understand what advanced tactics are, we need to understand first what primitive tactics are. Now, primitive tactics are loading your engineers up or any soldiers with grenade pouches and just cavemen rock throwing your grenades around the whole battlefield that, like you can see here. I have like a whole squad of engineers, everyone has grenade pouches and I just mindlessly throw around my grenades. Like this is level 1, this is the most basic bitch level. Here we see the next level of using grenades. You see we get attacked by lots of soldiers and since I have low firepower of my engineer, I just start blocking the entrances yeah, to slow the enemies down. And once they slow down, I start throwing grenades. And I always, I see, all right, four kills, easy. Now, since we're getting flooded here too, we just uh, bought a bunch of them and the situation is easy. Yeah, so this is, these are the most basic ways of playing grenadiers. Now, let's learn about the advanced ways. All right, now, similar to this strategy, we have the basic blocking of enemies who are approaching. For example, here we lost the first objective and the enemies are spawning here and they're gonna flood us. Now, what are we gonna do? First, we throw a Molotov to block this area so they can't push us. And then, what do we see? We try to kill them, flooding out, but they have a shield. Now, shield means I can't kill them since they naturally spawn there. Also meaning they don't have a ready point here. Now, what can I do? Very simple. I can just... Well, load up a uh, TNT and see, well, if they spawned like 10 seconds ago or even if they spawned like 5 seconds ago, if I start cooking the TNT, there's a good chance it will explode perfectly in time that the shield is gone and I can actually kill them. Yeah. So the combo of Molotovs plus uh, explosives extremely strong, extremely strong. Uh, like there's like infinite ways of, of, of how you can use them. Yeah? And also, since we know the enemies are spawning here, we of course are gonna barb wire the entrance. Like after this, I also went into the building and started barbing, but sadly the enemies ran out of lives. As you can see here, they still have 44, uh, 54 respawns, but after a couple of seconds, they lost them all. If they still had 100, 200, they would have all spawned in the, in the barbed wire that I was building, giving us like the biggest fun. But still, even here, slowing their, slowing their aggression, also possibly making them uh, spawn into the, into, the, into the fire from the Molotov is very potent. All right, now here we have another problem. You see, I was building stuff. Yeah, I was building tank blockers. Uh, to protect my rally point and then we see a big group of enemies approaching now Obviously, I can't kill them all myself with the engineer But what I can do is I can throw a Molotov into this group and what happens exactly the group gets slowed down The group can't run around anymore and if the group can't run away anymore You just throw a TNT since they, you know, they can't run away and guess what they all die Yeah, so Molotovs are basically a force multiplier that no matter how many enemies you are against, you can slow them down and deal damage to them, and then you can just finish them off with a TNT. Now, once you did this, this is the other, this is the other side of the map, basically, like 50 meters away. Once we clear them out, I ran to the other side and built a little position. Now, this position here has the advantage of this giant metal tower on the right side, from which nothing can damage me, not even tank hits. Now all we need now are a bunch of sandbags and guess what, we can start bolting away those enemies. Yeah, very simple. This is basically map control. Once you, once you establish map control and once we learn that the enemies are coming from the right side, flooding in, we, well, we can just build a nice position here where they can't kill us and just keep sniping them. And since you're playing your grenadiers, your engineers in general, <clears throat> with weapons that are good at long range you you also have the advantage since you can just snipe them from far away and you're even safe from their superior SMGs yeah same thing goes here I started doing the attack from quite a good safe distance obviously you are you're limited by the amount of range of your grenades but <clears throat> but here well here we have a perfect range yeah here we have a perfect range we're playing against Soviets, so they're gonna have PPDs and PPSHs. 
Now this is this also shows why you shouldn't use semi autos on your on your engineers. Guess what? It doesn't matter if you have the best semi auto in the game. Even a starter SMG gun is gonna kill you on short range. So it's like semi autos don't make sense anymore because bolt actions are way superior. Bolt actions are the best thing on long range and good at and still good or great at mid range. And if you're really good with them, they're also good to great at short range. Semi autos are just basically weak at <laughs> well, they're basically weak at everything. They don't really have any advantages anymore. Especially if you take into account the enemy's weapons. So yeah, like bolt actions make this whole strategy much much stronger overall. Yo, another way to establish map control is obviously by defense. Now here we are on the second objective in Monastery and we're defending it. And the first thing I was doing is I was building tank blockers here. Now why tank blockers? Simple. If you build sandbags first, well, they won't do that much. If you build barbed wire, my, very easy to blow up with grenades. But if you build sa tank blockers, enemies can't move around anymore because they are slowed down significantly. Our soldiers can hide behind them and they're protecting us from shrapnel and even from tank shots. Yeah, so they are like the basic skeleton that you build up to have a good defense and then you can build sandbags and barbed wire around them. Now, this is only viable if you have enough time, obviously, but yeah, if you plan well ahead, you're gonna have enough time. Now here in this particular case, what we see is, while I'm building, I see that there's a giant group of enemies coming. Yeah, you see I was trying to build a barbed wire, but five enemies, six, seven, eight enemies. Now this obviously screams for a good Molotov, and you're throwing the Molotov, and since I know I'm gonna die anyway, I just threw quickly two more grenades. Now, four of them died, and other ones are still burning. Yeah, and now you see, well, guess what? <laughs> Now basically every one of them died. Now, this is like an emergency button that you can use and that's like extremely good on engineers once again since we're here in the Grenadier Engineer fan club. You can do it with any soldier but the other soldiers won't be able to build these tank blockers and to, to establish a good defense. So the great synergy is that the, this type of grenading is extremely potent on engineers specifically. I don't even try it out with other soldiers, because which soldier class would you give grenade pouches? Specific, definitely not, definitely not assaulters, because you're gonna run out of, of, of uh, ammunition. Yeah, I know it's tempting to give an assaulter three impact grenades, but guess what, I'd rather have lots of ammunition than a couple impact grenades. Yeah, Especially the better the, the, the weapon is. Now, by the way, if you have low-level assaulters you, or low-level soldiers in general. Of, grenade pouches are actually a good idea, but guess what? You won't have big grenade pouches if you're low-level, so like even then the incentive isn't quite there. Now, if you have machine gunners, well, obviously dual-wielding machine guns is better than giving them grenade pouches. If you have snipers, dual-wielding sniper rifles, or depending on the sniper rifle, giving them Ammo pouches once again better. Also snipers are like the worst class for grenade pouches. Now if you have riflemen, obviously dual wielding grenade launchers is the best thing, so you have double the amount of grenades. Ironically, they have more grenades if they don't have grenade pouches. Yeah. So the, the only class, and the other class can't even use uh, backpacks mostly, so the only class where you really, ha where it really makes sense to give them grenade pouches are engineers. And that only doesn't make sense due to the lack of alternatives. It also just covers up their weaknesses and multiplies their firepower immensely. And it synergizes extremely nicely with the stuff that you can build, as you can see here. You can also, for example, if I was under extreme heavy pressure, I would just build, I would have built, a, or if I had an engineer squad, by the way, because this is a normal squad, I would have built a, an anti, uh, anti, air gun in this main door and kept shooting it and once I see oh wait there are too many enemies there they're gonna they're gonna blow it up with TNT all right now I have a big anti-air gun in this doorway and it's burning and for the next 30 seconds no one can go even close to it and this door is completely blocked and if you do the same thing with the other doors guess what 
there's no entrance anymore, <laughs> like they can't get in anymore. And if they try to destroy it somehow by pressing J, well, then I'm just gonna build one behind it. Or like build more tank blockers, so you can completely shut off anything with your engineers this way. And Molotovs are also once again extremely important, and the tank blockers too, because no matter how big the pressure of the enemies is, a good Molotov gives you 30, about 30 seconds time. And in these 30 seconds, you're gonna have lots of time to just, to just, yeah, to just build up a defense, to wait for your team to come, so you have more defenders, and also to annoy and, and mow down your enemies, as we can see here. Synergizes also very well with your SMG soldiers on close range. All right, now here we can see a whole sequence of capturing, attacking, and defending with the Grenadier. Now, first thing we're gonna do is, since we expect enemies there, we throw a Molotov to slow them down. Also to make sure they don't really focus on us attacking and focus on them burning. Now, also we follow up with two TNTs. I could save one and check out the situation, but it's too risky, I just always throw all of them. Now, next step is build a sandbag so you can hide behind it. Build a sandbag so you can hide behind it and and build a barbed wire so they can't jump over it and try to rush you. This way, we, we already established very strong control over the central objective. We basically took it away, we killed everyone on the objective. By the way, it wouldn't have mattered if they had 20 or 30 soldiers there. They would all have died by, by this uh, Molotov and TNT combo. And now we have more than enough time to, to, to capture and yeah, I, I even cut out this part because the capture was so easy after this. So yeah, now we capture this objective, let's go to the next objective. Once again, since we're using bolt actions, we have a big advantage over medium and long range. And we can just snipe everyone away, who's in our way. Yes, he's two and he two. And now, 10 seconds forward, we are on the next objective. Now, what are we gonna do? First of all, we clean out everyone who's around the objective. Once again, bolt action giving us significant advantages. We can just snipe everyone away. Now, while we see, well, more enemies coming. Once again, doesn't matter what type of, doesn't matter if we are like level 7 with a random good upgraded bolt action and they are level 37 with perfect PPSHs, we still have the advantage because we one-shot them. Now make sure you uh, you don't get uh, tricked by the hitboxes of the buildings because one shot I missed because of the hitbox of this house, but okay. And now once we killed everyone outside, we see, oh, there must be someone inside. Now guess what? I built this sandbag here to give us protection. Now people think sandbags can be destroyed quickly. They won't be destroyed within a fight. No one, destroy, no one has the time to destroy a sandbag during a fight. So these things are gonna stay there basically forever. And I built an ammo box behind it. Now once again, this dude reloaded his ammunition uh, before that on the ammo box and now he has lots of ammunition. Now he died sadly, but we can use this ammo box, uh, the sandbag now to just snipe away these dudes. People would say, oh no, semi-autos are better on short range because they're faster. All right, guess what? Take a look at this. We got one dude dead. And we got the next to that, and we got the next to that. So, yeah, it was four against one. And just building one smart sandbag, sandbag and one-shotting three of them just solves the situation. So you see, uh, just don't believe the, the like the superficial stuff people say. Oh yeah, semi-autos are better short range. In theory, yes. In practical terms, uh, nope. <laughs> Like in practice, if they were better, I would use them. I also tried it long enough, but I'd much rather have a really good bolt action than, um, yeah, than especially with a bayonet, than uh, like a like a semi-auto rifle, yeah. And in this case, semi-auto wouldn't have won me this fight, but this bolt action easily won me the fight. All right, another very important task of grenadiers is to destroy enemy tanks, obviously. And since they are basically the best, or depending on the power level of the anti-tank anti -tank rifles, the second best class to blow up enemy tanks. Like engineers are, until you get something like Panzerfaust, actually the best class to blow up enemy tanks and to handle them. So how are we going to do that? Quite simple. 
Now we see, let's go back to the first one. Here we see the very simple case. You just grab an anti-tank mine, drop it in front of a tank and hope it drives over it. Now you can start taunting it so it gets closer to you and then it, yeah, it explodes. This is the very simple case. Now what about the harder case? Now here we have, well, we have a T-34. T-34s are very overpowered in Moscow because they're basically, a, they're like a perfect tank. Extremely high offensive power, fast and ridiculously strong armor. It's the only tank in Moscow that you can't blow up with one TNT. Sometimes they even survive two TNTs, which is ridiculous. So guess what? First I'm gonna drop a mine in front of him. And now, so he can't drive away, I'm gonna build a tank blocker behind him. Problem is, he was already driving away. Okay, let's build another one far behind. Oh, nice. He drove forward again. And we can build a tank blocker. And you see, damn, it works. Now, we basically trapped him. And he, he tried to go back and forth, but also to avoid enemy grenades and so on. Especially if, if he's surrounded by a group of soldiers. If he can't go backwards, he will obviously start going forward. <laughs> because you don't want to feel trapped, yeah, for psychological reasons alone. So you don't want to feel trapped. So what you do is you just try to escape quickly. Because he knows, if anyone draws a TNT, I can't escape. And yeah, like... Yeah, this is like the way. Don't expect, by the way, to work, to to uh, to to have a perfect first tank blocker. It usually takes two if the tanks are moving around. Yeah, and yeah. Also, if you look at the video again, you will see that it wasn't my mind that blew him up. Sadly, it was an uh, it was a teammate's TNT. <laughs> he didn't even drive forward enough. Yeah, that was sad, but still it works out. Doesn't matter if it's TNT, if it's your TNT, or if it's uh, if it's your mine, or if it's a random TNT. Most important thing is that you actually defeated a tank like this, which is extremely overpowered. Another thing I could have done is to shoot at the mine to blow it up. Now this would have worked nicely, but I expected the tank very very surely to drive forward because he literally just was like 50 centimeters away from the mine, from triggering it. So I was very sure he would do it, but he didn't. Yeah, all right, unlucky. Happens, happens. Also what you can do is you can jump on the tank, drop the mine, and uh, due to how the game is coded, it will fall underneath the tank to the ground. And then you can just shoot on it, because you can shoot under the tank, obviously. Now, this isn't, by the way, ev this, this isn't even exploiting a bug because well if the if the game was coded more realistic the mine would be on top of the tank now guess what it doesn't matter if the mine explodes on top of the turret or right underneath the tank the, the result would be the same the tank would get completely destroyed yeah so and in both cases you also will die so depending on where your position is so it doesn't actually matter it's uh, yeah, it's realistic. It's like it's the depiction isn't realistic, but the outcome is the same as it would be. Uh, is, is, yeah, it is the same as it would be if it was realistic. So that's perfectly fine. All right, and now to finish the video, let's just see how you do the most basic thing. Now you don't often need the complicated combo of anti-tank mines and tank blockers. Most of the time what you can do is the following. You see a tank that's very hard to kill. For example, once again, the T-34 in Moscow. We start with a Molotov. Now, why Molotov? Very simple. We could start cooking a TNT. If we, well, we, we can't just throw the TNT because then the tank will drive away. So we need to cook it. Now, if we cook it, it takes us time. If we get shot, in the meantime, we didn't accomplish anything. So the first thing we want to do is we throw a Molotov. So... We, at least, even if we get killed, we did something, yeah? We slow down the tank. If we get lucky, the engine starts burning and the tank's gonna explode. But the very, at the very least, the tank can't see that well anymore. And the crewmates can start burning. So we already have some nice positive effects. Also, it's, it, it, it instantly just makes the enemy worse because the tank crew get, it starts panicking. Like, the player starts panicking. And now, once the, you see the tank starts reacting to you, you can just finish him off with some nice TNTs. Yeah, so this is like a one and two hit punch. 
<coughs> first a good Molotov, preferably on the uh, on the engine exhaustion part on the back side. But the, the question is the following: You can burn the engine exhaust on the back side, or you can throw it on the front, so the the tank the tank crew can't see anything anymore. Like, like, you choose like whatever you want. If you think that you have a good chance of blowing it up with a TNT, as I did in these two parts, I just for that reason I just threw it in front of the tank so they can't see anything anymore, and then I just finished off. Yeah. Uh, if I thought, oh wait, I won't have any time to to throw any TNT, I would have thrown it on the back side of the tank uh, to have a, to have at least a chance of of destroying the tank with the mortar of itself. All right, that was the video. Uh, we basically showed the advanced techniques you can do with a grenade uh, with a grenadier engineer. Try them out yourself. You will see it's not only extremely strong, it's also it's also lots of fun. And you also see. There's no other class in the game where you can do all of these combos and moves. And once you turn your engineers into grenadier engineers, yeah, you are gonna have lots of more power. And another detail that people, for some reason, still don't really use. Always put an engineer in every single of your squad and put him as the first soldier of the squad. I won't explain again, so I did it again, I did it a thousand times. Just try it out yourself, you will see it's much more comfortable and much better for your playstyle. Yeah? Put the engineer first place in your squad, in every squad, and you're gonna have a great time. Okay? Until next time, goodbye.